Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop Elements effects project we're going to be doing this kind of alien spacey sci-fi look image here. Now this is again pretty straightforward stuff but there are a lot of little details that you have to get right to make this kind of a science fiction look. Let's first start off with looking at how we've built this page, what, what our source material is for this particular image. So you have them right back here. There we go. This picture of this cute girl here. It's kind of in the background. We have this sky, this kind of sunset sky with a reflection on the water down below here. And then we have this cityscape over on the left hand side. We'll be combining all three of these together to create our sci-fi picture. Also notice that there are a few more things. We've added in some effects on the eyes. We're doing a hard light effect in here. We have a glow happening around our image. There's our, our glow effect in there. The cityscape is warped. As you can see, we can see the sky through that. And we're also going to be removing the water out of the cityscape and leaving just the coloration from the sky and then we'll be doing some fancy blending mode stuff as well to give us this kind of interesting coloration that we have in here. Okay so you know fairly complex a lot of things involved in this one and we'll, we'll start by working from the background and working forward in this picture. Let me just close this one down. The background here this is the first layer of our image and I've already saved this ahead of time just as my PSD file here, Hard Light Effect PSD. So we'll be using this as our basic file. We now need to have one copy of the cityscape and one copy of this girl included in this file so we can then work with those images. Let me just get rid of that little guideline in there. Shouldn't be any guidelines on that. Let's just clear the guide out. There we are. Okay, let's grab our cityscape. I'll scrub it over here, drag it onto that file. There we go. It's actually just about the right size. So that worked out nicely. Let's now move over here to the girl, drag the girl over, and there we go. There's the girl's image. We can now close those files. We no longer need those. Everything is now contained inside this one. Now before I go any further, I'm going to bring the size of the girl down until she's about where I want her to be, which is just about in there somewhere. Her, her eye are, and I'm just about on the edge here of the, the water line of the city. A little bit of space above so you can get that effect with a glow around her hair. Okay, so that's fine. Now we have our background. We'll leave the background alone, so just leave that as is. And then we have the cityscape. We'll be doing a couple things here to the cityscape. We want to, of course, see our background through, but I want to see the sky real clearly. I don't want to just blend this black into that sky. So I want to be seeing the clear sky. And we can do that by coming in and doing a careful selection around the sky and deleting the sky, leaving a big you know, clear hole up there. Now we could do this with a masking layer, but we'll be doing some stretching and adjusting later as well. So the masking layer is just going to be getting our way. So we'll just clean that out as a deletion. On the bottom side, there are two ways to handle this water. You could just do another selection along here, delete the water, and go with the water that's over here, or leave this as is, and then it will blend in when we do our blending modes. Yeah, either way is fine on that. So we're going to first start off with a basic cleanup here of the water, and we're then going to leave this layer here, blend this layer into our cloudy layer, and we're also going to be making a copy of this layer. And on the copy, we'll take out those buildings. 
so that we can then stretch the buildings. We'll do that in a couple of separate layers. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to just make a copy of this layer here up there like that. That's our copy. That's when we're going to select out the sky and we can take the water out as well on this one. So I'll hide that. Let's now do a quick cleanup on this. This is going to be our blending blending mode into the sky. We just want to zoom in a bit on this and make sure that there isn't anything in here that's just a a problem or just you know not really necessary. And the one thing I've seen is this kind of a a, a water fence or whatever that is down there. We don't need to have that across the bottom. It's just an added little detail. It's not necessary. So I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool. That's the size that was already on this. Let's just see what that size is. 39 pixels. That's fine. I'll leave it as is. Soft edge is fine. I'm just going to clone some of the water right down here and stamp it right above. Nothing dramatic here. This isn't really a critical part of this image. I just want to get rid of that fence just so it isn't you know really noticeable in the image. We just want to keep the focus on the girl and on the building so that's just one less detail to worry about. Okay that's all I had to do there so that's fine. Oh there's a bit I missed over here didn't go far enough that's okay, we can quickly fix that. There we go. Alright, so the water has been cleaned up. Let's now just adjust the blending mode on this to blend it into our background. And we'll use the overlay on this. So here's our blending modes. Scroll down, overlay, and there we go. It just blends those two together, giving this is kind of really interesting excessive color effect. Now I want to have the buildings in front of all this stuff and our new buildings are going to be hiding most of these buildings in behind so you don't even need to worry about that. So this set here is mostly about the sky and the water. Alright now for a part that's going to take a little bit of time we need to come in and carefully select around all of the buildings in here and around the water down below and then delete the stuff that we don't need. On the bottom half you could just use the eraser to go and just you know erase in there because it's not critical. Now that eraser is a bit too small. Let's see we have 13. I'm going to set this at 100. I actually want to have it a soft brush. Let me just find our soft 100 right, right there. That's fine. Soft 100 on the eraser and I'll just come in and just kind of erase the bottom half and you're leaving kind of that, that soft edge at the bottom. Again, the bottom half of this isn't critical. So that's good enough for that. And then we're seeing, of course, our bottom layers now through that layer. The critical part is the top section. That's up in here. Let me just zoom in on this one I'm going to show you what I'll be doing and then I'm going to pause the video and finish the work on cleaning out the top and then bring the video back up again. I don't think you want to sit here and watch me for 10-15 minutes doing careful masking on this. So I'll start with my polygonal lasso tool. I'll just click up here someplace so I can see where my start point is and then I'll come into the edge of the building like that. Each time you click it puts in a new point. And I'll keep some of that highlight here. And this is just a matter then of going around the edge of the buildings. Clicking for each point. When you click it, it kind of locks that in place. I can then move the line around anywhere I want to. and then just carefully follow around the edge of the building. This doesn't need to be really precise on this, but you know the cleaner the better obviously, but it's not really really critical because of where the focus 
is on the attention and it will be doing some warping and so forth on this as well. If you're a little off on some of this stuff, it's just going to disappear in everything else that's happening. It's kind of nice when you have something which isn't as critical. It takes a little bit of the pressure off on doing it. So this is the idea. It's just to come along and carefully follow the skyline, mask out the skyline. I might be leaving some things in, taking some things out, just making some adjustments as I go. Kind of artistic license on some of this stuff. I'm putting my preference towards the bright parts of the buildings. If there's a real dark part at the top, I might just ignore the dark part. It's not really going to show very well for us. Okay, I'll just finish it up around this one building here, which kind of comes down like that. And I'll bring it up around the edge of this, up to that point at the top there. Now, if you're using this polygonal lasso tool, don't click too quickly. If you do, then Photoshop Elements is going to try to close out your selection, and it's not going to be what you're trying to do. Okay, I'll go right to the peak of that building. And just click up here someplace, click over there someplace, bring it back to the start. Notice how the cursor gets a little dot next to it as it overlap the start position. That means I can then close the shape at that point. Now I'll just hit the delete key and I just delete that out of there. And then select and deselect. So that's the idea. And if I hide these two background layers, you can see what we did. We just came in here and clipped out that sky, again being a little creative around some of these things. We're going to be warping it anyway, so that doesn't really matter. So I'm going to now pause the video and I'll finish doing this kind of cleanup along the rest of the buildings. And it's not that much. We've already done about a third of it, or a quarter maybe. So I'll just go along do all the skyline along here and remove that sky. And I'll then bring the video back up at that point and we'll look at how to warp the sky image. And there we go. There's the cleaned out image. Notice that we have that, that soft edge along the bottom here. Nicely clean. I'm going to do a, a little additional cleanup. Notice I have this kind of coming down here and it's showing me all this area down here as well. You see that with that selection area. I don't want to have that bounding box down there. So let's grab the rectangular marquee tool and I'll pull it in here a little bit and raise it up just a touch so it's above that and I have my soft edge. That's fine. Let's now invert this and hit the delete key. That will clean out anything which may be hiding down here and deselect. Okay, there we go. Notice how the bounding box now is right against the image. That's what I wanted. Didn't want to have anything else down here. There was probably a little pixel someplace down here which was leaving that bottom part in. The reason why I did that is that we need to be able to do a perspective shift on this. Since I moved that around, let me make sure it's in the right place again. Okay, right about there is good. Now on the perspective, I want to have this left side tall and the right side tall and coming into shorter in the middle. So we'll be doing this twice. And we'll do that by copying this layer. The layer up to the new layer button like that. We now have two copies of that. Let's hide the top copy. The bottom copy will be our left hand side. Go up to Image, Transform, and Perspective. Grab the handle. Notice how as I pull the handle up, the whole thing shifts larger on that left-hand side. I can then pull the right-hand side down, but if you pull the right-hand side down, notice how it, it shifts everything over to the right. You can kind of come in here and tweak these positions a little bit. Let's do OK on that. And I'm going to just shift it in a bit here again. See this gap right there? I'm going to have that gap as kind of my center point. So let's just pull a guideline in here to about the center point, which is right about 7. 
may have set that in place first. I'm going to try that again. See if our guide will show for us. There's the center point. Okay, we ended up with two of those. That's fine. There we are. So there's my center point. Let's check that position against the skyline. That looks good. You see why I did that center point in just a minute. I want to have the other skyline here match that. Okay, on this one I want to make the right side taller. So, image, transform, perspective. Let's pull that up. Notice how as I pull that up, everything shifts off to the left. There's my gap way over there. So I'll set this in place, and then I'll pull that left side in and pull that gap over towards the right. It's getting a bit too small. You can see there, it's really beginning to scrunch up. So I think I'll go about that far. So now bring our, our other one in, choose OK, bring the other one in. Looks pretty good. We have it kind of taller on the sides. That's about what I want, and everything's still nice and vertical. I'd like to have this building a little further to the right, so I'm just going to pull this one over a bit like that. And actually pull it over so I have my gap is in the same location. So that looks good. Now we need to cut off the any excess on this. So on this one I want to bring in a rectangular marquee. Let's pull it down like this, pull it right to that center line. There we go. Make sure you're on this layer I'm cutting off the left side. Hit the delete key and it cleans off the excess there. Let's now go down one layer. We'll invert the selection. Select inverse. Puts it on this side. Hit the delete key and that gets rid of that side of that image. So you can now deselect. And we now have our distorted city in the background. Don't worry about the problems in this middle section here because the girl is going to be on top of that section. So she'll hide anything that's in there. That's fine. If you want to, you can combine these back into one layer. Just merge those two layers together. There's no real reason not to. You can just bring our background in and see how things look once the background is in place. Everything looks good except for that building right there. You have a ghost of this building back in that background right there. So we'll need to paint that one building out just to keep things nice and clean. I don't want to have that duplicated. So let's take care of that quickly. That's that one. If I bring it down to where the city is down here, that will be fine. It, it won't be noticeable. It's just too obvious that it's a duplication. So let's grab our clone stamp tool. Make sure on the right layer. I'm going to copy from out here, Alt and click. And let's just clone that sky right over that thing. I'll fix it a little bit there in just a second. Same thing. Alt click and come over here and just paint it out. That building is now gone. That's all we need for that. Easy fix. Let's bring our two top layers back in again so that ghost building is now gone. That's perfect. Let's bring our background back in again. And there we go. There's our distorted look on the city. Now the girl will be sitting on top of that. So the next thing to do is to remove this background out here. And we'll do that by putting a layer mask on this layer and then masking out that background. So it's on layer two and do a layer mask. By default, the layer mask comes in as white. And white is show all, black is hide all. I can demonstrate that very easily here. Go our paintbrush tool and notice how we have this cyan outline around the mask. I'm on the mask right now. If I go over here and double click on the image, I'm on the image, there's that cyan outline. Make sure you're aware of that. When you're on the mask, we can paint black onto this and hide that background. There's my brush, way, way too big. Let me bring that brush size down. I think 100 would be pretty good here. There's soft 100, I'll work with that, that's fine. Okay, now let's check our color. Color swatches using the black right there. That's good. I'm on the layer mask. And then if I paint black on the layer mask, you see there's the black. See how it hides that image? 
The image is still here. It's just being hidden by the black on that layer mask. So let's just go around and I'm going to leave it out a little ways like that. We'll be cleaning that up in just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to be watching the layer mask and painting out the excess outside here. Okay, so far so good. At the beginning of our mask, now I want to refine this and clean up that edge around the girl's figure. So I'll go up here to select refine edge. There it is. Notice I have a little circle here with a plus sign in the middle. What you want to do is you want to click that plus sign where you want to get rid of something and overlap where you want to keep. So I'll just kind of just paint around that edge like that. Now if I change my view here, we have overlay on black, on white, black on white, and so forth. I think overlay works out pretty well. You can see it. There it is. And I'm just going to carefully paint around this edge, putting the plus sign outside of the hair. And let Photoshop find the edge. Don't worry if it gets a little weird in spots it's a sci-fi picture so that will be okay it's also okay to go over something a few times to get it just exactly right and we can adjust the mask afterwards as well and you'll notice how it's doing a pretty good job of leaving the hair in there and getting rid of everything else Looking pretty good. Let's just move it over a little bit. Okay, I think we're okay. Let's take a look at this on black. We can then see those edges in there. So I want to come in. I want to clean up those edges. We can try to adjust that by adjusting our contrast. If you bring the contrast up, that will frequently bring those edges in. You can see there we go. There's the edges are coming in with that contrast. You can smooth the edge out a little bit if you want to. There we are. Sometimes decontaminate layers will help as well. If you do this, you can also save it out to a new layer, a new layer with a mask, new document, new document with layer mask. We'll do a new layer with mask. Choose OK. There it is. So there is, there it is without that refined edge. And here it is with the refined edge. Notice how it's much, much better now. We can come in and do a little tweaking on this because, again, we can just paint onto that mask. So we'll still have black on the paint. That's fine. And let's just zoom in a little bit here. So there's a little bit of lightness right there, a little bit right over here. We can adjust those. Grab the paintbrush. Now I had a large soft edge on this. I'm going to bring this down to about maybe a 35. There we go. And I'll just clean up the edge on that. Now it's important to clean the edge up because we're going to be doing that glow around this. And the glow is going to look weird if we have anything out here. It's kind of funky. It's going to, the glow is going to be outside on that that outside stuff. So you want to make sure you do a pretty good cleanup on this if there's any cleanup to do. All in all, though, it looks like a pretty good mask. On the right hand side, not as good in here. We can either try to, you know, just kind of soften that up a little bit, or you can just let it burn out with a glow. There's going to be a lot of glow happening in there. It'll probably burn out and look all right. Okay, I think we're okay now on the hair. So that's good. Let's zoom back out. Hold the Alt key down and zoom back out. Now, don't worry about the coloration of the girl right now. We're going to be doing some stuff on that to make her far more exotic looking here. So there's our image. There's our mask. 
that's all taken care of nicely. Now let's put that outer glow on this. And you can do that up here under layer and layer style right there. Style settings. We want glow, outer glow, and there's that outer glow beginning to happen. And you can then choose how much of a glow you want to have outside the figure. This is a, you know, it's a personal, personal taste. Since so I've put a lot of glow in here, we can begin to see some bad edges in there. We can come back and adjust those once the glow is on. I'll put it about like that. And then we'll clean up those. It'll clean up on those edges. Okay, so there's the outer glow. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see how the hair is kind of kind of streaky in there, kind of kind of rough and ragged. Doesn't look too good. Let's fix that up by by softening out the hair in just that area. So for that, we'll use this tool right here. This is the blur tool. I need a little larger brush on that. Let me see I have it 13. Let me set that to a 35. Should be better. Now you can either blur on the mask or you can blur on the image. I'm going to blur on the mask. That just softens up the edge of that mask in there. And that will get rid of some of that little problem effect. Looks pretty good. Let's go to the right hand side. You can see same thing here. And again, I'm just blurring up the mask and softening up that edge. Maybe just a little bit along the top edge up here just to kind of soften up that edge as well. Doesn't take much. And let's zoom out now, just little tweaks. Looking better. We'll see if we need to do any additional tweaks on that as we go. I'm going to get rid of this line in the middle here. Let's go back up to our view. And let's clear the guides out a little better. Okay, so there is the first layer for our kid, just having the outer glow on that. Let's do a copy of this layer. Pull up here, do a copy. That's how the glow gets more dramatic when we do that. That's fine. On this one, we're going to be bringing in some of that hard lighting effect on this. We're going to be doing a color dodge. And that's our blending modes. Color dodge. This is that real kind of hard coloration in here. I might be do some more tweaking in here on the hair. It's a little, little weird still. So we'll play with that. So we have our color dodge in here with our glow happening. That's fine. Let's make another copy of this. Secondary copy. This time I want to change this from a color dodge to a soft light. There we go. So those two combined, the color dodge and the soft light, gives us that real high contrast, hard coloration effect. Let's now see if we can soften down some of that hair out there. It's a bit much. So I'll come back to our original image. And I think I'm going to come in with a little bit of the mask and let's just soften that mask up. There we are. Back to our paintbrush. Bring the size up on the paintbrush. I'll bring it up to 100 again is right there. Bring the opacity down to about, I don't know, 40-ish, around there somewhere. And I'm just going to come in and soften up the edge of that mask. Like that, just to soften that edge up. So what I'm doing is I'm painting in a kind of a gray tone, actually. Now, if we bring back up our other images, they still have that hard effect but it's not going to be as noticeable because they're blending but if you want to be perfect on this what you can do is you can copy this mask up to these layers 
if you hold the control key down and drag, it pulls the mask up. If you hold the Alt key down and drag, it copies the mask. Let's undo that one as well. And if you hold the Shift key down and pull it up, it also pulls it from the bottom and moves it to the second level there. So there's different ways of working with this. We'll be doing the Alt and Drag, which is going to copy that layer mask up. And go up here, Alt and Drag, copies the layer mask up. We've now matched the layer mask on all three of those, and it has softened up that edge. Okay, that's all looking good. It's a bit too much of a glow because we're doubling up on our glows up here. Double click on the FX on your top layer. Let's take out that glow and see what happens. That's a bit better. See, that was too much there. It's a bit better. Let's come down to our secondary layer, double click, take the glow out. A little better. It's kind of hard to see. I might, I might just bring the glow down on this one. Leave it on, but bring it down a bit so I have a harder edge glow in tight and then a softer outside. So the harder inside glow is from this layer and the softer outer glow is from that layer. So there we go. We have our, our girl now on here. She has her glow. She has her hard light coloration effect. We have our distortion in the background. All of that is working great. All we need to do now is to do those eyes. So on those, it's a, a few steps in here. We first want to match the size of the brush onto the eye. Now, sometimes when I record these things, the size of the brush doesn't match exactly what the size that I'm looking at. I don't know why that is the case, but sometimes is. So if you're if you're not seeing the brush size change, what I'm doing is I'm going to be matching the brush size to her pupil size. So I'll just pull the size down a bit so you can see that number. There we go. 59 is too large. 45 is still too large. 43. 40 is getting close. Let me zoom in on that and back to our brush size. Okay, 43 or 40 rather is almost an exact match in there. So that's good. So let's change the color here. Bring our color swatches back up again. And do a cyan, a little bit of a darker cyan. I'll do this one right here. That's the CMYK cyan. And then let's make a new layer. There we go. And I'll come over to the left hand side here. I'm just going to tap it for five times looks pretty good. Maybe six. Six looks pretty good. Do another layer. Same thing over here. Just kind of center that over the eye. Three, four, five, six. So that matches. Now I want to blend this in with the iris a bit better than that. So layer three here. This is the her right eye. Our left side, of course, is that one. And this one is her left eye. There we are. Let's now do a hard light effect. Right down there, hard light. Looks pretty good. And hard light. Looks good. We can then bring down our opacity. I just want to have some coloration in there, but not too much craziness. Let me say it at 80%. So I'll match that here. I'll just type in 80. Okay, so there's the coloration on the eyes. You can go anything you want. I went a bit darker than my previous example on this one. just kind of felt like it this time. But that gives you that coloration. Now all we have left to do is the highlights on the eyes. You see there's kind of a highlight in her eye already. You know, right there and right there. I'm going to copy that position. And we'll need a much smaller brush. So go to the brush size here. And you can either do this with a brush or with a shape. I'll do it with the brush. Let's find a, a hard brush at 9. That's a bit too large. 5. 
Five is, or actually nine is good. There we go. That's what I want. Nine is good. Hard edge. And then let's change the color on this to white. And then right in there. And actually, I went one went too fast. Let me just undo the brush tool. I'm gonna use the Control Alt Z keys here, and let's just back up. And that's not working for whatever reason. My keyboard isn't working properly here. Let me just back up on the brush tool for a second. What I forgot to do is to put it on its own layer. There we go. Okay. So let's make a new layer. There we go. This is the highlights. All right, we're all set. Back to our paintbrush. Do five clicks right there, kind of match the position over here. Just back up one touch. That looks good. A little bit cartoony, but the cartoony actually adds a bit to the sci-fi effect on this. All right, we'll zoom out. And there we go. There's kind of the hard light effect with this spooky sci-fi girl in here. As you can see, pretty straightforward actually on the process, just a lot of little steps to get it to this point. The main thing, of course, in here is these blending modes and work with the blending modes and the layer masks to give us this interesting effect in here for the girl. The background is just something interesting for the background. The real trick is the stuff on the girl's image. Okay, there you go. There is the hard light sci-fi look. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.